Mike Owens and Inside Fighting here, We're joined today by Neil Magny, who returns to action, UFC Vegas 100, facing Carlos Protas in the main event. Neil, always a pleasure, my man. How are things with you today? No, I'm doing great, man. Uh, thanks for having me on with you. How were your emotions ahead of your return? Oh, uh, was that? Sorry. How are your emotions ahead of your return? Oh, man, it uh, feels great. I mean, nothing short of gratitude. I mean, uh, uh, this year has been like literally a roller coaster ride. I mean, uh, from the Milan fight being a roller coaster in itself within that 15 minutes of that fight, um, to coming up short and fighting against, uh, not short, coming up way short and the fight against, uh, uh, Mike Morales and then, uh, being back here, getting an opportunity to go out there, um, uh, and show the world, world that was still relevant and everything else like that. Um, I'm just grateful for it. It's a huge opportunity and I'm ready to go out there and make the best of it. I feel like when I look around the UFC and I look at people's styles, yours might be one of those that are most suited to being a main event and being over five rounds. Do you feel like that? And do you look at this matchup against the guy who's very early in his UFC career and see that as a potential advantage? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the, uh, the fight's a brawl. I mean, like, going on, on paper, um, it should be one of those things. Like, yeah, the, the longer the fight goes, the better off it should serve me and that kind of thing. Um, but also, it's the opposite, too. You have a guy who um, isn't relatively known to go into those later rounds and that kind of thing. So, um, at that point, the race is on. Who can implement their game plan earliest? Who can catch who earliest? Um, and who has the, the wood and grit to get the job done? So, um stylistically it's like all right one guy tends to fight shorter one guy tends to fight longer let's see who's able to go out there and get it done uh on fight night so um i'm excited i'm excited for a matchup i'm excited for this uh um the style that they're clashing style i'm excited to go out there uh and test myself against a yet another young up-and-comer so um everything points towards an exciting fight so i'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it you mentioned that the last fight then against michael morales i think a lot of fans and myself included were quite surprised to see you matched up so quickly after just just coming off that fight in i think it was the end of august what was the process of getting this fight booked and when were you actually offered the fight against process um honestly this fight came out surprise to me i mean i was in the gym uh more so kind of being a, a training partner i was helping my other teammates get ready for their fights um these guys showed up for me for my fights so like i right, couldn't cool, go ahead uh return the favor for them so um I took some downtime to recover from the Mike Morales fight uh, and was back in the gym training, getting ready for, for the other guys' fights. Um, and it literally just kind of, it came about like random for lack of, the lack of better words. Uh, UFC reached out saying that they had an opportunity for uh, a five-round main event in Vegas coming up in uh, in November. Um, at the time, there wasn't even an opponent that was mentioned. It was just so uh, an idea being kicked around mm -hmm. that there was an opportunity to potentially fight five rounds in Vegas come November. Uh, uh, yeah, count me in. So before I even knew who the opponent was, I just had all I had was a date and location. I said, like, yep, count me in. I'm ready to go out there and get it done against whoever. You've always been that guy to give guys below you in the rankings the opportunity to fight for, for kind of your rank and also to get kind of the Neil Magny scalp in many ways. You feel like when we when when I saw you fight against the Gary, you've been on this kind of prospect tour, if you will, of Gary, Malot, Morales, and then now obviously Pratas. Can I ask, do you like fighting these guys, these kind of prospects, or would you prefer to fight kind of guys who've already established a name in it, a kind of a, a veteran versus veteran match? I mean, it's one of those things like right now, I still see myself being a competitor. So I have to keep against uh, going out there competing against the best of the best uh, as far as the young upcomers who aren't relatively known yet. Um, I don't take it as an insult or anything else like that at all uh, or whatever. Um, right now, I still see myself being a competitor. Um, maybe one day the things shift and that may not be the case anymore. Uh, we played with like my older peers, <laughs> so to speak, for me to fight then. So uh, but right now, it's not. I'm not really settled in on like just competing against my 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 peers, so to speak. I want to test myself against the best of the best. And uh, right now, it's the young up and coming up and coming undefeated fighters that um, are being thrown my way. So that's the the challenge I'm, that I'm accepting right now. Has Carlos Process been on your radar, or what have you made of a visit to UFC? Um, not at all. I mean, one of those things. I, I was kind of jokingly uh, rooting for him to win against uh, Jinglang. Jinglang. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, just like, oh, cool. Fresh meat, a new opponent, <laughs> because at this point, um, I pretty much fought just about every Wells you can think of. So whenever there's a new person in the Wells division that you that they that I get to compete against, I'm always kind of like in the back of my mind, kind of keeping an eye out for him. Like, oh, cool, who's this guy? What does he mean? The kind of thing. And when I saw he was fighting Jimmy Yang, I figured he was pretty close to um, getting a shot at the rankings, that kind of thing. And I knew he was kind of going to be uh, a guy that was potentially on the radar for for future fights. Uh, that I think it'll be. This year, uh, absolutely not. But uh, here we are. I got the fight. I got the offer. Um, training camp is going well. I got a star group of guys around me to to tra train for this fight. So um, here we go. We're about to make the best of it. 
Break down his style for me and what do you see as potential areas of strength and what are areas that you're looking to exploit in this one? Yeah, one of the biggest strengths he has is, uh, is his speed and power. Um, it's very uh, uh, unorthodox to have a, a long, rangy guy, especially from softball, uh, mm-hmm. be able to have the speed and the power aspect. Normally, uh, when you have a guy who's built like him, they're, they're kind of built for endurance. They're kind of built for volume, that kind of thing. Um, he's a guy that's able to do both. He has a, a pretty well-rounded skill set thing on the outside using his striking with a variety of strikes. He has a uh, Good kicks, good good strikes. I mean, lands that left hand uh, very hard, uh, or whatever. So um, he definitely has a pretty solid uh, striking background. But overall, I think uh, uh, match pretty well against him. I mean, going from sophomore orthodox, I feel like I can uh, exploit some holes in his game on the feet and then uh, uh, in the clinch on the ground as well. I feel like I can exploit the fight there. So um, these are one of the matchups I'm really really excited about because it uh, the margin of error is small, um, but it allows me to go out there and be free because I uh, I don't have to worry too much about where the fight's going to take place, whether it's standing, whether it's on the ground, whether it's in a clinch. Um, I feel like I can find a significant advantage. So um, that's one thing that excites me about this fight. Yeah, 100%. Look, we hear this phrase a lot recently in MMA. We hear three words. A lot of people bandy around the phrase, sign the contract, these myth- mythical contracts that have been sent out for people to sign. But your resume and your willingness to fight anybody at any time kind of speaks for itself at this point. I guess my question I want to ask you is, why do you feel like you're the one who will always say yes? Like, what what is it that about you? Because we do hear it a lot about people declining fights or maybe people not wanting to accept certain terms. Why why do you feel like you're kind of the minority in many ways? Uh, for me, it's just, uh, just my mindset, and my approach on it. I mean, uh, I lead with gratitude before anything else. So uh, whenever a fight offer comes my way, it's not like, it's not necessarily me saying like, oh, boo-hoo, poor me. It's more so me taking that moment to really appreciate the, the appreciate that fight offer and have a level of gratitude associated with it. So when a fight offer comes my way, it's literally like, oh, thank God, I got an opportunity to go out there and compete. I want to go out there and write for my family. I have an opportunity to go out there um, and do all these different things. So um, I would, I would, I don't see myself ever being in a position where um, I turn down a fight unless something significant is happening, unless there's a, um, like, uh, as I merge with my family, unless I'm injured uh, or something like that. I don't see myself ever turn down a fight. Uh, if I'm healthy, uh, if I'm training, if uh, I'm in shape. Um, I don't see a reason for me not to fight, regardless of who the opponent may be. Um, it's also always leading with them with a level of gratitude and appreciation for being able to do what I what I do for a living and for for fun and that kind of thing. Um, so it's always yes for me, unless uh, after I'm injured or something crazy happens with my family, I'll always be there ready to fight. So to follow on from that question, if you had to give me an estimate, what percentage what percentage of the UFC roster has that same attitude? UFC 308 is this weekend. Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway for the UFC featherweight title. And we have an incredible new offer from our partners at DraftKings. Right now, all new customers who bet $5 will instantly receive $200 in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and sign up using our promo code Inside Fighting. The crown is yours. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, I think like one of the last few has that uh, that old school cover mentality, but actually truly fighting anybody anywhere, anytime kind of thing. I mean, uh, you have guys like Dan Egan who definitely kind of step up to the plate, do what they're gonna do. Um, Diego Lopez, another one. Um, you definitely have some of the. Excuse me. You have some guys in the roster who are willing to uh, put it on the line at any given moment or whatever, but um, I would definitely say a majority of the roster these days are, are, are the opposite. A lot of people are are more so uh, trying to like chase clouds, so to speak, rather than actually try to um, chase an actual fight. I mean, there's been guys that are um, going to announce fights taking place where, one, they haven't talked to UFC, they haven't talked to the opponent, they just, like, two upon themselves and say, like, hey, um, I'm fighting so-and-so on this date, and it's like, wait, what, where did you come up with this date? Where did you come up with this idea? Like, it, it's not even taking place. What are you talking about? Um, and, and there's a lot of that going on. But the other, the other thing I think is uh, uh, making things difficult is, like, some people have this idea of a quote unquote money fight in their mind where they have to hold out for the money fight. And um, to me, that's one of the most overused phrases and terms in, in MMA, especially UFC in particular, because um, there's very few people in the roster who are able to negotiate their fight, fight by fight, purse by purse. Uh, majority of us, probably 90% of the roster, um, we're all kind of uh, contracted for a set amount of bouts and our pay is predetermined. So, um, whether you're fighting so and so or so and so, um, your fights personally are predetermined. You're not going to get like a significant jump in pay mm. um, because you're fighting a, 
a guy that's ranked five because a guy that's ranked ten. Like it just doesn't happen for uh ninety percent of the roster. There there are just like few who are able to negotiate for um bigger purses, percentage of pay per views and that kind of thing. But um that's that's just a very few in the company that's able to do that. Majority of us are contracted prior to the fight even being announced, whoever's gonna be. Mm. Um how in what in what ways does this fight taking place at the UFC Apex and specifically in the small cage affect this one? Do you look at that as a potential advantage, disadvantage, or does that not concern you? Um, no, I mean, uh, honestly, being in the smaller cage, I think it's gonna be uh, it's actually prevent some actually present more difficulties and advantages because uh, we're both longer guys that tend to fight mm. from the outside. Uh, so like now being like, all right, two two long guys fighting each other in a small cage, it's like if he takes a step back. We're against the wall. I think step four, we're back in the open. So it's like, it's going to be a very uh, tight space to fight in where it's going to kind of limit some of our long range weapons or whatever. So um, uh, it might be a slight disadvantage for that reason. Um, just because we don't, we don't have full access to use the, the full arsenal of weapons that we bring to the table. So um, it might work as a slight disadvantage going into this fight. Yeah, 100%. I have to ask you about the recently booked welterweight title fight between. Bilal Mohammed and Shavkat Rachmanov. Just your thoughts on that one and how you see that fight playing out. Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm excited for is that there's the this movement happening in the division. There's not uh, this idea from holding up the Wall Street division for a rematch and that kind of thing. Um, it's an opportunity for some fresh, young talent to get out there and challenge for the title. Um, so on that part, I'm really excited. I'm really excited that Bilal made the choice to um, go out there and defend the title uh, uh Immediately, as opposed to holding out, waiting for the best case opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's a lot of chatter online about uh, finding this person, finding that person, moving up weight class, doing going down, like all this other crazy stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, the fact that the, the the fight is actually taking place, that's the first thing I'm grateful for. Uh, but if I had to break this fight down and think of uh, um, who would win in this fight, it, it's interesting because Shao Kahn, up to this point, has uh, 18 wins, no. Uh, losses, all 18 wins could by finish, um, that kind of thing. So it's hard to root against a guy like that. Um, but Bilal is one of those guys that kind of sneaks in and gets it done somehow every single time. Um, when I look at Bilal's uh fighting style, his skill set, his ability to um drag the fight to deep water, so to speak, and how he uh tends to break his opponent down over time, where um, he's kind of keeps the it's almost like uh, uh, he's like a, a great press, so to speak, like he just puts the pressure on slowly, 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 mm-hmm. slowly. Um, and he gets tighter and tighter while you're in there. Um, and I can actually see Bilal kind of making this a long, drawn out fight and being able to beat uh Shavkat in the distance. I mean, I'll be the first defeat for Shavkat, but um, I see Bilal being able to pull that off. Give me one key to victory for each guy. So, what to give me one thing that Shavkat needs to do to have success, and one thing that Bilal needs to do to have success in this one. Um, the biggest thing for Bilal to have to success in this fight is going to be using his wrestling to not necessarily uh get the fight to the ground or even submit uh Shao Kha, but be able to control the fight. Uh being able to close the distance to control the fight, it'll be it's going to be Bilal's keys to victory in the fight against uh Shavka. For Shavka, the biggest thing is going to be to um kind of keep his composure uh and not necessarily go for the hunt immediately. Uh if you see the opportunity to go for a kill shot, sure, absolutely take it. But uh knowing that he has the 18 wins, all 18 wins by finish, and having to fight for the first time in 25 minutes, potentially against a guy like uh Bilal. Um if he kind of takes his time, picks his shots, and be a little more selective on how he enters in for the finish. I think that might be his uh, key to victory, where he doesn't he doesn't need to exert himself or blow his wide early, so to speak, where he doesn't have anything left in the tank for later rounds with a guy like Bilal. What's more likely, Bilal wins the fight by stoppage or Shavkat wins the fight by decision? Um, <laughs> If I had to guess, I would say, especially later rounds, I think... Uh, Bilal might actually have more likely of finishing by uh, finishing the fight uh, by TKO or Smith, wherever it may be, in the later rounds, more so than Shabkat being able to uh, outwork Bilal for five rounds. <laughs> well, last question from me, Neil, and as always, I really appreciate your time. You can be as brief or as detailed as you like, but give me a walkthrough of your perfect fight day as you envisage it. It's when you wake up in the morning, it's when you go to sleep at night. I think I've asked you this question multiple times, but I'm going to ask you <laughs> again. How do you see the perfect fight day? 
Man, the perfect for me is just uh, everything lining up perfectly. Maybe I get to uh, have a smooth, easy wake up. Hydration goes well. Um, day of the fight, wake up, have a real good breakfast, a good, good shake out with the coaches. Um, it's not like start flipping that switch. I put my, myself in that uh, competition mindset where I know like um, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. I'm willing to go wherever length to get the job done. Um, and I'm going to stop backing down for anything. I'm going to go out there and be relentless and find a way to get it done. Um, once the fight takes place, just kind of bring the fight to, to process and going out there and not just like partaking a fight but going out there and taking what I want from the fight um, and I just come out vic victorious and I, I know uh, what I'm capable of I know the, the skill sets that I have I know what training camp is going like for me um, and I'm more than confident that I'm able to go out to get the job done come uh, November 9th I love it well look Neil always good catching up thank you as always for your time have a great and safe rest of camp and best luck for the next fight awesome I appreciate it see you in the next one